hey besties it's me <laughs> apparently anytime i do a video slightly differently i just forget <laughs> what the introduction is <laughs> but good morning today is the 9th of june and it is the morning well i'm not actually <laughs> But actually our flight's not until this afternoon, but we're leaving this morning for Paris. So uh, right now it is five past eight. My older brother's going to pick us up in like an hour-ish. Uh, he's driving us to Liverpool Airport and then we're getting on the flight to Paris. The flight isn't until 12.30, but obviously yeah, you've got to be there before it happens. And I'm also packing my makeup away at the same time as I am doing it. So yeah, welcome to the vlog. The basic plan for this vlog is I'm going to try to film without my phone getting stolen in Paris. If you didn't know, the city is notorious for pickpockets. Great. Um, so um, hopefully that won't happen. Um, and yeah, I'll see what happens basically. So I have the whole trip planned out, but I don't want to say what we're doing yet. You know, be a surprise for you as the vlog goes on, but the movie section will be uh, the last section. So we're going, um, Today, on the Friday, the movie isn't till Sunday, so it won't be until the end of the vlog. Obviously, of course, though, I won't be filming the movie itself. Just in and around the cinema, obviously, I can't film any of the movie, which a lot of people are confused about. When people heard I was doing a vlog for the trip, they were like, but you can't film inside the cinema. I was like, yeah, I know you can't, that's illegal. I was like, of course I'm not going to film the film, film the movie, <laughs> whatever. You know what I mean? Like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you what we're doing. Um, but yeah, I spent like all last night after I finished off Cartoon Apocalypse's birthday present <laughs> um, sorting out like what's the best metro station for the different things we want to do and stuff. I have been to Paris before when I was 11, so I'm 26 now, so it's been a while and I don't remember much. So basically what we used to do is we used to go on caravan holidays to um, somewhere in like usually at the north of France, like the Somme area. Um, and we would drive from where we live in the north of England down to Dover, get a ferry um, across to Calais, then drive to the campsite and we'd stay in like a static caravan for like a week. And sometimes the campsites did like special special trips to places and stuff like that. Um, so we would used to go on them. And um, we went on this once day trip to Paris. All I remember is the coach was coming to the caravan site and we had to be up super deep early to drive to Paris. I can't even remember how long the drive took to Paris. I don't know. Um, the first place we went to was the Arc de Triomphe. Like, it wasn't a guided tour, it was like, we will drop you off, we will take you. But you do what you want, and then we take you back to the campsite. So we went to the Arc de Triomphe first, and then we went to the Eiffel Tower and climbed up to the first stage. Had some food up there. And then I don't really remember the rest of the day. I know we went to the Sacre Coeur, Galleries Lafayette, Notre Dame. And that was pretty much all I remember. <laughs> so I don't remember a, a great deal of Paris. I know I've been, but I don't remember very well because I was so young and it was so long ago. So hopefully I'm actually gonna remember this time, but I am pretty nervous to be honest. I woke up at half four <laughs> because I was so nervous. I woke up at half four and I was like, you know what? You know what's gonna help alleviate your fear, Hazel? Do some Duolingo. So I did some Duolingo. <laughs> At half four in the morning. It was French. I did French on Duolingo. Um, so yeah, basically part of the nerves is I'm not afraid of flying. I'm not nervous for the flight. Uh, the flight's like only like an hour and a half as well, so it's not even that long. Obviously England isn't that far away from France, so I'm not worried about the flight. My mum, <laughs> the reason I'm nervous is because my mum is like, I'm going to be relying on you to doing all the talking because I've been studying French now for over a year. So I'm like, thanks mum. So that's why I'm a bit nervous for because like I've been to other areas of France before and I've spoken a bit of French and oftentimes when you get it wrong, if your French isn't perfect, they can usually understand and you kind of muddle together and you get, you know, you get what you need. Whereas my memories of Paris, even though I couldn't speak any French when we weren't, but my mum could speak some, if she got anything slightly wrong, they just pretended they had no idea what she was saying and it was horrible. So <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> about how well we're gonna get on there, but I have, like as a emergency, the Google Translate app on my phone. I hope I won't need to use it, but if I absolutely have to, if everyone's just refusing to speak to me with my terrible French, then um, I guess we'll have to do that. Which is great, I'd rather not, but 
if it has to be that way, it has to be that way. So yeah, so uh, the basic plan today is we're going to land at like, um, I think we land at five past three. So the flight's at half twelve, but it's only an hour and a half, but because of the time difference, it shunts it an hour later. So British time we get in at like 2pm, which is only an hour and a half, but because France is an hour ahead, it's um, 3pm, so we're going to go straight to the hotel and I think the Aria takes about an hour depending um, from the airport to where we're staying. So we've got some stuff planned for late afternoon, evening. That we don't actually arrive in Paris properly until like 4 p.m. because of how long the Aria takes. Um, and then the Saturday is my mum's birthday, so we've got stuff planned all day for her. And then on Sunday morning, obviously we have the movie premiere and my flight home is at like eight, I think. It's in the evening, early evening. So yeah, um, so I just want to say I'm going with my mum, but she's not actually going to be in the vlog, so I'm not actually going on my own to do this. My mum just doesn't want to be in the vlog, so please don't worry about me. I'm not wandering around Paris on my own, even though it may look like that. I am with my mum, I promise. Okay, I wouldn't go to Paris on my own. I don't know it well enough. Like, I'd go to London on my own. I know London fairly well. Paris? No. <laughs> uh, I'd be asking to be murdered, to be honest, if I think I already went to Paris on my own. So, yeah, we're... Uh, we're not doing that. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty tired to be honest. I've been working super hard this week to make sure like all the videos get done. So I've already made Monday screaming session on confrontation. I've already made Saturday's movie theory video. I, I already, <laughs> so yesterday's video, well the day I'm filming this yesterday's video, which was the representation theories, I made it, but then we got the trail of representation and I was like, hmm, looks like I am completely wrong. <laughs> So I had to remake it. So I wasn't very happy with that, but it is what it is. So I've been working super hard to get it all done. The movie theory video especially. God, it killed me to be honest. <laughs> it took ages. Um, but it was definitely worth it. I think it's a really good video. And this morning they've also released the new single from the movie, Plus Fort Ensemble. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to edit before I go. I think I'll have time to record. It depends if the English translation's out. I don't know, I'm just gonna get my makeup done, do my teeth, get everything packed pretty much, and then I'll see if the English translation's out. If it already is, maybe I can edit. If not, I'll probably just be able to record and then have to send it to Edward to edit for me. Yeah, I think that's probably what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna finish the rest of my makeup, but I just wanna say, a massive thank you right now. It is not lost on me how, first of all, how lucky I am, even without the movie and getting to go and see it, it's not lost on me how lucky I am to have a platform like this that, first of all, is fun. Like, Miraculous is my favourite TV show. It's amazing that I get paid to make videos for it and it's basically not a full-time job, definitely like a part-time job and is supporting me through the last stages of my PhD, which is just insane in of itself. Um, and obviously it's no secret I get paid. I don't get paid like in the millions, but like it's a good amount, <laughs> you know? Um, so I just want to say thank you without your support. I definitely couldn't do this. And again, also without having this amount of subscribers and this many views and this earning this amount of money, I wouldn't be able to just go to Paris to do this. So not only am I lucky enough that I managed to get a ticket for this thing and that I could afford it and that I could also afford to go to Paris and I wouldn't be able to without all of your support and watching my videos and stuff like that. So thank you so much. It's really not lost on me how lucky I am that I get to do this. And I know in the UK, I think it's similar in other countries as well. Uh, here it's called the cost of living crisis where everything's just going up and up and up. So honestly, earning money on YouTube has just been absolutely amazing. Like I said, wouldn't be able to do it without each and every single one of you. So. Thank you all so much, besties. So I'm gonna finish my makeup. I've got eyeshadow to do. I found this super cute eyeshadow palette. I was in London last week. It's so cute. It's like, it was from a Japanese pharmacy. It's adorable. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm gonna finish my eye makeup, finish packing, and yeah, then we'll be off to the airport. So um, I hope you enjoy the vlog, besties. So we flew from Liverpool Airport. That's my favorite place to eat. Greg's, if you come to England, you need to try Greg's. So we went to Liverpool Airport and honestly, um, yeah, it's, it's a good job I had to mute it because the only thing they play at Liverpool Airport is back-to-back -back Beatles songs. And there's only so much of the Beatles I can take. I do love Liverpool. I went to university here, 
but um, not the biggest fan of the Beatles. So we got something to eat and then we went to wait for our flight. It wasn't a super long flight, although, however, oh my God, it was, was not the best flight I have ever experienced in my life. Like, you know, I'm not afraid of flying, but I'm like, you know, I don't like it. I just see it as a means to an end. Or if I want to go to cool places, the easiest way is usually to fly. So I'm like, I can deal with it for like, what, three hours maximum. That's the longest flight I've ever been on before. And the turbulence was so bad on this flight. My mum was filming this out the window for me since it actually makes me feel really sick to look out plane windows. Um, and this wasn't her shaking, this was the plane shaking because that's how bad the turbulence was. It was really, really bad. And also when you fly out of Liverpool, you got like immediately got to take a sharp turn, otherwise you end up in Manchester airspace. And it was so sharp, like everyone on the plane was like worried we were going to crash. It was awful. So when we got to Paris, we went straight to the hotel to drop our bags and then we went to get to the metro to go to Montparnasse Tower, which is of course the place that is used in Cat Blanc, it's used in Octagami, it's used in Oblivion. Now sadly, the day that we went, the sky deck was closed, which is obviously where they go in those episodes right on top of the roof, but that was okay, it was on the 56th floor. And honestly, I think if we went up on the roof deck, we would have been burnt to a crisp because of how hot it was in Paris. It was extremely hot. I now have like 12 blisters on my feet, but I would 100% recommend this. Like I know there's great views from the top of the Eiffel Tower, but the queue for the Eiffel Tower is just so long. I would recommend much more going up Montparnasse. As someone who's been up the Eiffel Tower, Montparnasse is a lot less difficult and it's all air conditioned. <laughs> Whereas the Eiffel Tower is not because it's technically, you know, outside. Um, so I'd recommend this much more. You don't have to wait as long. And when I say you don't have to wait as long, we were literally waiting two minutes before we were allowed to get in a lift to go all the way up to the 56th floor. So it was really, really good. I really recommend it. You can see pretty much everything from here, including a massive graveyard, which was <laughs> really fun. So after Montparnasse Tower, my mum was like, let's take a 45 minute walk in the heat to the Eiffel Tower. And I was like, mum, have you lost it? Uh, we did eventually get that, although we passed by like um, a military school on the way, which was uh, kind of cool, I guess. So we reached the Eiffel Tower just as the sun was setting. The first part, I don't know the name of like where we were, where the parks are here. This was, I mean, it was busy, like Paris is always busy, but it was it was kind of chill as you walked from the Eiffel Tower. Honestly, there was still a massive queue for people coming up. I have no idea how long the Eiffel Tower is open till. Absolutely not. Oh my God, when we got to the other side of the Eiffel Tower where the Trocadero is, you could not see the ground, it was packed. Like we just took one look at it and we were like, yeah, no. So like, we're not staying here, so we just walked up the steps, got on the metro and then went back to the hotel. We were not having it. So the next day was my mum's birthday. So I decided to take her to the catacombs. Now the catacombs are really, really interesting. Like the first part, this is what the first part looks like when you walk through. It's just basically a load of old tunnels because the catacombs were initially, before they were filled with bones, were actually a quarry um, for a certain type of limestone that is only found in this region of France. It began with an L, I'm not sure how to pronounce it though, and it's actually what most of the buildings in Paris are built out of. So it's really cool, but the floor, like if you're gonna go, definitely um, wear flat shoes. It's a bit uneven in places. And there's also stairs to go up and down over 100 both ways. So, you know, just wear some sensible shoes if you're going to the catacombs. Now, the next part of the video is full of bones and skulls. And whilst I absolutely enjoyed myself, I know most of you won't. So I'm gonna put a timestamp in the screen for um, <laughs> when the skull part is over. So like I said, these are all the skulls and the bones. It was absolutely amazing. This is extremely morbid, but I've wanted to go to the catacombs since I was about eight years old. I've always had a really morbid fascination with death. I don't really know why like i'm the kind of child who would read true crime books and watch those kind of documentaries and just apparently a psychopath but to be fair i am doing a phd that's in part about suicide like you know there's only a handful of people in the world who are interested in death so you gotta let those ones you know research suicide and stuff because no one else will want to because it's super duper depressing but just this whole exhibit was really, really interesting. There was an audio guide with it, so you weren't just wandering around in the, well, I was about to say in the dark, it wasn't that dark, as you can see, there's lights everywhere. So um, there's staff wandering around as well, so it's not like you're alone down here. So there's like an audio guide telling you about certain things, like there's actually only one gravestone down here. 
things like that. It was just a really interesting exhibit and no, you're not allowed to touch the bones. I did not touch the bones. Like I'm fascinated with death, but not to the point that I want to touch these. There's no money in the world you could have paid me <laughs> to touch these. I did not want to touch any of the bones. So my mum actually really enjoyed, well maybe not really enjoyed it, she didn't enjoy it as much as me, but you know she liked it, she thought it was very interesting. Actually a few years ago in Rome we tried to go to the catacombs there but they were fully booked, we didn't book early enough which was sad, so I managed to book, you know, well in time to go to the catacombs here. It was actually a really long queue when we first arrived, but like when we were actually down there we hardly saw anyone. Like, I knew there were other people in there and there's only one route you can go, but like, there was just no one there. And also, speaking of, a lot of people, when I posted these images on like Twitter and Instagram, were asking if I went to where Lila's like new bases, we saw it in collusion. No, we did not, because that part of the catacombs is illegal to go to. So this is like the legal safe route. However, the catacombs runs much deeper than this, like the steps down, it's only 130 steps roughly at this exhibition, um, so not that far below the surface. Um, however, the catacombs run much, much deeper and in order to get to them, you need the help of something called a catafi, which is basically a French person who just knows the rest of the catacombs. So there are loads of things down there. There's like a cinema, I know there's a kitchen, there are bedrooms, like they've hung up hammocks. There is of course the wave room, or I think it's um, called La Plage, uh, which is the room that Lila has her base in. So um, yes, it does exist, it's real, but I have absolutely no idea where it is. You'd need the help of a catafi in order to find it. So after this, me and my mum went to one of my mum's favourite bakeries, which is called Paul, and I bought her a citron tart because she loves citron tarts and that was her birthday cake. <laughs> so I sang happy birthday to her in the park and then we decided to get the metro to go to the Sacrica. So it was a really nice metro ride. It was the first metro I've been on that was actually outside the tunnel. All the other metros we took when we were there were inside the tunnels. So it was really nice. I actually really love Parisian architecture. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So then we arrived at the Sacrica. So this is like the street walking up to it. I have no idea what's going on with the lights. Having a party, clearly. And we had, oh, there's a pigeon. <laughs> we ended up going in a lot of shots along here purely because it was like the middle of the day by this point. Obviously, that's usually when it's the hottest. Uh, we were both dying. We are both extremely pale. And there was a really nice chocolate shop we went in up here because mainly we went in there because we were like, it's chocolate, there's a lot of it, therefore it has to be air conditioned, otherwise it's going to be melting. <laughs> that was a logic and turns out we were correct. So we walked up this hill towards the Sacre Coeur, which I believe is just a church. Apparently I've been in it before when I was 11, but I have not much recollection of that trip. So it's a really steep hill to get up there, so we took what's called the funicular. I'm not sure what the version of this word is in English. I don't really know. It's basically a lift that goes up and down this hill every single day because of how steep it is. Um, and we just use like our metro passes to get on it. So we didn't really, <laughs> didn't really cost anything apart. I think they like got 10 tickets on the metro station. So around the Sacre Coeur, like about a 15 minute walk from the top of the Sacre Coeur where the hill is on, is the bakery that is used for Marinette in the show. And here it is, oh my gosh, I was so excited. So you can see it's pretty much the same from the outside. It's actually a really popular bakery just in general. There was a huge queue and this is briefly what it looks like inside. It was quite busy, like I said, so I couldn't really get many shots. So I decided to get a chocolate tart because I love chocolate. My mum got, I think, a pan of raisin um, and we both really enjoyed it. So we didn't have everything they had. They had a lot of different stuff, um, but I would definitely recommend a trip there. It is a bit out of the way, but like, it's great. It's the Boris Loom Bakery. I'll put like the address on the screen if you're interested in going. It's great. Really recommend it. And honestly, the area it's in is really, really nice as well. So I just recommend going. Not super duper quiet, like there's still people around, but it's you know, a lot more calm compared to other areas of Paris. So then we got the metro to Place de la Concorde, which if you know is where they chopped all the heads off during the French Revolution. It's where they had a lot of the guillotining in, which basically my mum's birthday ended up being a death tour around Paris, <laughs> which was great fun for me. So we walked across the like 15,000 zebra crossings they have there and started walking down the Champs-Elysees. So the first part of the Champs-Elysees is a load of parks and my mum, I think she was kind of getting like heat exhaustion, like I said, we're both very pale. 
we neither of us do well in the sun we had sun cream on and stuff but we were both dying so at this point we went into a park to sit down and then my mum fell asleep for like 15 minutes in a park in the middle of Paris amazing so then we started walking down the Champs Elysees itself with all the shops honestly we didn't go in much it was pretty busy by this time and they were like for the more, more popular shops there were like people queuing out the door but it was a really nice place so I think our plan was to walk all the way down towards the Arch Triomphe which is at the other end of the Champs Elysees so Place de la Concorde at one end Arch Triomphe at the other we decided probably about I don't know three quarters of the way down to get the tube and we went to Les Halles which is like is a really good shopping place they have a Westfields here if you've been to London they have a Westfields there just like a shopping centre it's a really cool shopping centre it's kind of like semi outdoors it's really cool look at all those pigeons on the wall amazing i love pigeons this was great <laughs> so then we also got the metro back to the hotel as we did always and this metro was one of the driverless metros which is really cool we sat right at the front and you can see how it like arrives at the station i just thought it was awesome so then on the last day on sunday we walked to garda lest or the east station our hotel was right between gardenor and garda lest um, it was an okay hotel, it was a Mercure at Gardenal, don't recommend it. <laughs> so then we arrived at the premiere, as you can see loads of people were dressed up, it was really really cool, really enjoyable, and in the queue I met the cartoon hotspot, we'd kind of arranged to meet up, but then it kind of all got muddled around and I didn't end up going to the, what we'd like planned initially, but then I saw her further ahead in the queue, she invited me to come up, so me and my mum went over, we took the selfie, she's absolutely lovely, it was great. <laughs> so then inside the cinema we were both like sat in roughly the same place, that's her in the pink, um, and then this was like actually in the cinema, so like I said we were sat really high up on the grand balcony, but it was just a beautiful cinema in general. Well, and now I'm gonna shut up and let you listen to the bits I recorded. No, I didn't record any of the film, but I recorded some of the presenter and I also recorded a little bit of Jeremy and Atom speaking as well. Quand je ferai le 1, juste on applaudit avec les mains, on t'applique si vous voulez, vous faites ça, on essaie. Ça c'est bon. Le 2, on rajoute aux applaudes un petit euh, youhou, euh, vas-y on s'en plaît quoi. Et le 3, là le 3 on est au top, c'est le vous mettez debout, on fait, on fait du bruit. So before the any of that started, like the doors opened at 9.45 and we were all pretty much in the queue by that point. Um, so we went to get our seats right away and my mum was sat with Cartoon Hotspots and the rest of their friends and stuff. So I went out to the little, they had like a little pop-up Zag store, so I got some stuff. Look how cool the bag is. So it's got the Kwame's on the side, Zag on this side, and then the heroes on the side. Yes, I know it's Vesperia, not Queen Bee. What are you gonna do? <laughs> so the first thing I got was this little Lady Bug doll. I think it's meant to be like the you know, the dolls that Marinette makes Manon in the Puppeteer. She's really solid. Like this is not cuddly, like you could throw her at someone's head and break the skull, it's not that hard. But like she's not like squishy like other 
soft toys I've had before. She's very, very solid, but she's super duper cute. I love her. And like on the arm, she has like little stitches as if like someone's just made her. Super duper cute. And I also decided to get some miraculous jewelry. I actually went in really wanting Chloe's bee comb, but on my floor where I was, they didn't seem to have any. So I decided to get Marinette's. I hope this focuses because they're so small. Marinette's earrings. These were really tricky to get because whilst yes, I speak some French, I forgot they have the studs and clip-ons and because I have piercings I don't particularly want clip-on earrings, I want the studs that I can actually put in. So I haven't worn them yet, I'm just going to leave them for a while but it's really cool little box it comes in, do you know the boxes? So it was awesome and also in the cinema when you all sat down at your seat everyone got a little tote bag which was super duper cool so it's filled with goodies. I think some people got slightly different things. So if you didn't get the same as me, if you were there, <laughs> this is why. So the first thing is a little lip balm. I saw some other people with nail polish. I saw some people with hand sanitizers. There was some sort of cosmetic item in there. So I'm glad I got the lip balm because it's the one I would actually use. <laughs> the next thing you got was um, two copies of the same children's magazine from 2021 which was great, along with a glittery ladybug mask. <laughs> this is so cute, by the way, I loved it. Then you got a poster of the movie, which was awesome, how did I open it? I wanna put it up somewhere, I don't know where yet. It's great. Then you also got a little coloring book. Isn't it cute? I loved it, it was so adorable, just like the amount of care they put into this. Uh, then you got this, which was like, a voucher thing I don't really know I don't think I can use it anymore since I think most of these things were being in Paris or in France little sticker sheets they also gave everyone a double-sided mask as well for something at the event which I've already forgotten they basically want us all to stand up with a mask on and then they gave us two cards from the top trumps game I got fluff and bunnicks my mum got a free bag as well she also got fluff and bunnicks I saw other people with fluff and bunnicks did everyone else get fluff and bunnicks did you get somebody else <laughs> I don't know, I only ever saw Fluff and Bunnicks. I don't know why really they gave these to us, but it was just really cool and just really well thought out and it was just, just a really cool event. It was just such a great experience. I just wish everyone hadn't screamed so loud at certain parts. My ears were basically dead after the end of the event. So pretty much after the event, me and my mum had to head back to the airport pretty soon due to the time of our flight. So we decided to cross the road and we ended up going to McDonald's just for a quick lunch. We don't usually eat at McDonald's in foreign countries. <laughs> we were just like, you know, we just need something quick to eat. So we went to the McDonald's across the road. So. I stayed in the McDonald's to collect the food. My mum went outside because it was really warm in the McDonald's so she was like, I'll go and get us a seat. You stay here and get the food. So I was like, yep, yeah, no problem. So she'd managed to get a table outside by the time I'd waited to collect the food. And uh, from where we were sat, we could see across to the cinema. So like I said, opposite the road to each other. And one of my goals for the trip on the day the movie came out um, was to try and just see Jeremy. I knew he was at the event because he gave that little speech before, but I hadn't seen him when I'd come out of the cinema initially. And this was like, I don't know, maybe like half an hour after the movie had ended and the premiere was over. So I kept looking over, trying to spot him, as you all know don't have the best eyesight. So I really paid attention to what he was wearing and I was actually looking more so for his shoes because they were black with like bright white on the bottom. So I was looking for his shoes and suddenly I saw shoes similar to his. I looked up properly and I was like, it's him, it's him. And I was like, mum, what do I do? She was like, just go, you gotta go, you gotta go. So I was like, okay. So I pretty much ran across the road. Don't do that. <laughs> I was desperate um, and he was on the phone when I got there so I just stood and waited um, and when he was off I asked for a selfie with him then I told him in French that it was my dream to work for him, that I was English um, and that I'm learning French for him which is pretty much the reason I've been learning French and he was so lovely when I was telling this to him like, it, like I'm not the fastest talking in French the same way I am in English it was kind of slow but like he understood what I was saying and he was just like oh my god thank you like kind of like this this is so kind he was so lovely and then he told me in English to keep going that I can do this um, and then he asked me what I thought of the film and I told him in French that I thought it was magnificent. So it was just amazing. So I went back, <laughs> I went back over to the road to McDonald's, sat back down. My mum, even though she couldn't see super clearly, she wears glasses as well. Don't have good eyesight in this family. <laughs> um, she was like, did it go okay? And then I just burst out crying. I kind of had like a mini panic attack, but not the same, like because I was I was happy, you know? It wasn't like a panic attack, 
hyperventilating, getting anxious, getting overwhelmed. I'm gonna cry again <laughs> because it was kind of like, I can't believe I actually managed to do that sort of thing. Like <laughs> my anxiety has always been really, really bad. Um, and like this time last year with where my confidence was, I don't think I would have been able to do that. But like part of the reason, I think some of you know this, part of the reason I started my YouTube channel wasn't to make videos about Miraculous, it was just to get more confident. Um, and I have definitely got more confident as my channel has gone on and stuff. So um, I'm just <laughs> super grateful to myself for sticking with this and managing to get more confident and also for sticking to my guns and actually talking to him. Like Hazel a year ago, if she'd been brave enough to even go to Paris to go to this event, because I was really nervous before the event started, um, she probably wouldn't have asked Jeremy Zag for a selfie and if she had, that would have been it. And she would have walked back off to McDonald's. She wouldn't have said anything to him or spoken in French to him. Like me last year being able to speak in French to the director of a film she's just seen and the producer of a show she loves. Absolute insanity. <laughs> so um, I'm just so grateful. And I guess thank you to all of you as well because like without you commenting and showing how much you love my videos and stuff, it like that also gives me confidence too so thank you so much and also hi again to the people I met at the event <laughs> you are all really lovely so um it was awesome to see you all there so after we finished on McDonald's and I had a panic attack <laughs> we ended up getting a taxi back to the airport our plan was to get the RER the same as we did on the way in or the RER but they were doing like maintenance work and we would have to get the train to the stadium and then get a bus and honestly we were just really confused by it and I didn't know enough French to be able to work out exactly what was going on even with Translate and if we got lost I didn't think I could save us from the situation. So we decided to pay to get a taxi. It was going to be more expensive but we just thought you know for peace of mind it was going to be better. So we eventually got to the airport, we got something to eat since it was around dinner time at this point and then we went through to wait at the gate. But our flight was actually delayed. So the flight was meant to be at like 8 p.m. and we would get back in England for 9 p.m. <laughs> there was really bad weather in the UK. There was a storm warning going on, like both in Paris and in the UK right now. It's about having heat waves, so it's very, very hot. But when it comes really hot, it's more likely to rain and have a storm when the heat breaks. And um, so there was a really severe storm warning in the UK at the time and also one in Paris. And literally as we were getting in the taxi back at Gare it started to rain. And then when we were sat at the gate waiting for the plane, it just threw it down for 20 minutes. And apparently there hadn't been rain in Paris for like 20 days. So I um, definitely needed <laughs> the water, um, but we didn't actually end up getting home until 1 a.m because of how late the flight ended up being. I don't think we got on the plane until about 10.30. Um, and there were quite a lot of babies on the flight. The babies were not happy about being woken up, which, you know, me too, me neither. <laughs> but anyway, I have since recovered. Like I said, I have like 15 million blisters on my feet from um, how hot it was and how much walking I did. Um, but it was 110% worth it. I'd go back and do it again tomorrow. I'm just, so proud of myself for speaking French on the trip. Like I've been studying mainly to, you know, understand the show better when it airs in French, but also, you know, France is the country I go to most on holiday. So, you know, it, it made sense. I finally start learning some more French, more than just like please and thank you and a couple of nouns. Um, so I'm really proud of myself for being able to speak French because right before we left my mum told me that she was relying on me to do all the speaking and I was like thanks that's you know, making me feel better um, but I managed to do it I spoke to everyone in the restaurants I went on Montparnasse Tower I got the tickets for us there's a couple of people who spoke to us on the metro asking if it was our next stop my mum had no idea what they were saying so I had to communicate for her and stuff like that so just being able to do that I'm really really proud of myself um, and also getting to talk to Jeremy it was absolutely amazing. A lot of people asked if I met any of the other voice actors there. I did not. I didn't even see them. I have no idea where they were. Uh, the only person I met was Jeremy. But honestly, um, to me, that was the only person that mattered personally to me. That's not to like say anything bad about the voice actors. They all do a wonderful job, but I actually don't even know what any of them look like. <laughs> So I wouldn't even know who I'd have been, you know, trying to spot. Like the person I wanted to see the most at the events was Jeremy Zag, and I got to. And it was absolutely amazing. He was absolutely lovely. So thank you once again for you all 
for basically helping to like finance this trip. Like I said in other videos, it's no secret that YouTubers get paid and whilst I'm not earning in the millions, I'm earning a substantial amount that helped pay for the tickets for the film, the flights, the hotel, food whilst we were there, anything else. So I'm just so so immensely grateful so thank you all so much I hope you enjoyed the vlog sorry there wasn't actually any talking in the vlog I get embarrassed talking in public to a phone <laughs> I prefer to do voiceovers afterwards of what happened anyway besties I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one bye